We got a 2005 Ford Escape. Start it up, go for a drive, and uh, you shut it off at the grocery store, gas station, whatever, won't start back up. Today we, oh yeah, by the way, it's got a uh, 3.0 liter engine in it. So we're gonna be using the X-Tool DS7 right here. Let's check it out. You can't go wrong with it. I mean, yeah, go out, buy a $100 scanner that can just read codes and live data, or you can pay a couple hundred more and get something that's gonna cover you for so long. Here she be right here. I've been using it, so she's a little, little dust on the case. Right here, we hook up our DLC right here to the scanner. Comes with the power cord, a couple other goodies, you know, anything that you would expect to have ready to go. Let's plug this into the vehicle and the DLC and uh, check out our codes. Don't mind the beeping. We are gonna find the DLC down here. It's right there. Plug her in. No charging required. It charges off of the vehicle, but you can also charge it up without using a vehicle. Turn your key to the on position. No need to start the vehicle. Here's our home screen right here. Got some updates to do. This comes with, what, two or three years of free updates. And you can still use it after your subscription is up or you can pay. Like if you're working on brand new vehicles like 2024s. We're a small shop, so we deal with older vehicles. So I only need to update every three or four years. So we're just going to auto scan this vehicle automatic scan and it's going to go through all the modules all we're concerned with right now is the powertrain control module pcm that fault code right there that's what we're looking for pretty quick loading we've got to read trouble codes key on engine off on the fords you can also do a uh on on demand self-test all right this shows that codes have been cleared recently that's the only fault code we have now, after a drive or two that'll go away so Let's go to live data and see if we can find something that's off about this. And the special functions, actuation tests, like you can turn your fuel pump on and off, your purge valve, stuff like that. Hey, are my fans working? You can turn your fans on, all kinds of stuff. Click on live data, you get a whole spread of everything. Now we go through live data and look for anything that is off. And we can just hang it right here from the steering wheel. Believe it or not, a coolant temperature sensor being way off will make the car not start. So that's why it starts when the engine is cold. It adjusts the air fuel ratio on startup. And then when you shut it off, your engine temperature is close to 200 degrees, but the sensor is still reading around zero degrees. So that'll actually cause a no start until the vehicle cools off again to get closer to that temperature range. That's why the tow truck driver brought it in and said, hey, started right up. It had time to cool off. So where they had it towed from, they stopped real quick, went to start it back up. It was way off, didn't start. By the time the tow truck driver gets there, bam, it starts back up because it's had time to cool off. And like today, it's like 50 degrees out. It's 60 inside the garage right now. Car drove in, that should produce some heat. There's no way it's five degrees. Got our little air inlet off here. Our coolant temp sensor is right here. And what we can do is just unplug it. Look for corrosion. That looks nice and clean, nice and clean. Look for any breaking or crackings in the wire. And what we can do is go back to our scanner and see what we're reading now. So now it's max, max minimum, negative 40 degrees. So it appears as if the wiring and everything is working and we have a bad sensor and we can verify that real quick. First thing we should be doing is testing resistance on the sensor. What kind of resistance at what temperature that sensor should have. We got a new sensor all right here. Remember, we are all the way bottomed out at negative 40 degrees, that's the max. Let's go ahead and plug this new sensor in and see what the scanner shows once we plug the new sensor in. 
it should be a lot closer to what the actual temperature of the vehicle is the engine all right that's plugged in we'll walk over to the scanner now and we are at bada boom dead on i told you my garage is set to 60 degrees and look now we're reading correct that was definitely a bad coolant sensor and that's why it's important to have live data because the sensor was bad but still within range so not throwing an engine code so there's nothing to point you in the right direction that's why it's so important to have that live data and go through it and see what's looking off sometimes with the engine warm cold running sitting that's diagnosis for you we could have jumped to, you know, looking for massive vacuum leaks, but based on the customer story, that wouldn't be right. Could be uh, fuel pressure, fuel pressure regulator, something like that went out on them. But the first thing you do is bust out a decent scan tool, check for codes, check for live data, look for anything that's off, you know, anything that's going to cause the vehicle not to start. Something that's, you take a short drive, it's driving fine, you shut it off, you go to start it back up, it just cranks and doesn't start. So first thing is just go to the scanner, get some data, get some codes, and go from there. Pretty easy to change these ECT sensors on these Fords. Now you just grab some pliers and twist it to the left. See, it goes left, right. And then we're going to wiggle it out. We don't want it to break off inside there. You can see our new one. It's just plastic here, guys. Looks like it's got a crack in it. New sensor. It's going in the same way it was, kind of at like uh, 10, 1030 o'clock. Looks almost like it has straight water in it. So we're just going to let as much drain out as... Uh, as it will and then we'll fill it up with some pure 100 percent maybe the block did start to freeze in some spots and that's why it looks like there's a crack in this sensor so the first thing to freeze would be these small passageways it's kind of just an interesting situation let's go ahead and put the uh new one on there we go got that little click put this back on let's go ahead and leave the x tool D D7S hooked up, go for a ride and watch that temperature uh, while we are driving and make sure it adjusts properly. As we drive it longer, we should see a steady increase up to the operating temperature, which is like 195 on these or something. We're still in the garage. She's warming up. Exhaust is a little loud. On the live data, you can select just what you want to see and pull it up. Makes it a lot easier. We can also uh, hit the old graph button. It's making a graph for us. As the temperature increases, the numbers will increase. See our temperature rising as it should. That's how fast your engine warms up, guys. 94, 95. Let's take it for a drive. Make sure all the air air pockets are out. Get everything circulating. See if we hit the gas a little bit, we can make the temperature increase faster. Okay, it works great as an air freshener. Just got back from my test drive. We're at 180 degrees and falling. It corresponds with the gauge, so everything's lined up there. I always run the heater on full blast whenever I'm doing you know, air bubbles in the system. Some vehicles have a valve that only comes on when you have the heat on to uh, circulate everything through the heater core. We'll use our X tool to clear codes if there was any codes stored from unplugging and plugging while we were doing diagnosis. We need to wait for this coolant to completely cool off before we open our reservoir, top off the reservoir and check the mixture ratio, make sure it's good for our climate. I just like how fast this one is. Clear treble codes in case we uh, built any up. Codes have been successfully cleared. And that's a diagonal repair.